Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toy Escapades channel in Malaysia. Just my quick thoughts today on Masters of the Universe Revelation Season 2, Episode 1. Now, I was really looking forward to this one because no doubt the last one ended on such a cliffhanger with Skeletor stabbing Prince Adam. But man, seriously, it was such a cop-out because as it turns out, Adam is still alive after being stabbed like that. Not only that, but he's seen being dragged about while bleeding all over the place. And this might be the first time I think that we are seeing actual red blood in a Masters of the Universe cartoon. But yes, Adam is still alive and he even has the time to give an entire speech to Skeletor. All this with a huge wound running through him. And at that point, you kind of realize that if the script calls for somebody to survive a sword stabbing, then that person's going to survive a sword stabbing. You know what, I actually like how the episode begins with a flashback scene with Man at Arms, Baby Tila, and the sorceress right before she surrenders herself to the service of Castle Grayskull forever. There's this foreshadowing here that Tila will be bestowed some of Grayskull's magical powers. But you know what, as this scene was playing, I'm looking at Man at Arms, and apparently he goes from looking pretty much like Ben Affleck in his younger days to something like a 70-year-old Tom Selleck with muscles. I really appreciate the fact that Skelligod has got so many good scenes in just this first episode that pretty much establish him as the major villain for the entire season. Now, you know, maybe this will also help the sales of his action figure because that thing's just been languishing on star shelves since season one came out, okay? It's just you know, piles of it just everywhere. Um, won't somebody just buy these toys? Skelligod stabs the sorceress brutally at some point during the show and she appears to die as the power flows out of her. I mean, it's a very gory scene. I gotta admit that, you know, uh, this episode alone really manages to earn the show its P13 rating, okay? And, um, but the question here is just that, you know, is the sorceress really dead? Because, you know, Adam was stabbed too and he's still walking around for hours. Skelligod then decides it's time for a new guardian of the secrets of Grayskull and he transforms Evelyn into the new sorceress. Now she gets a cool bat headdress and the promise of a brand new action figure in an upcoming wave. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's usually what happens, right? Now, Tila and Andra manage to escape the clutches of Skelligod together with Adam uh, with the help of the sorceress just before she dies. See, what she does is that she transports them from Grayskull where the battle is taking place all the way to the porch of the royal palace. And it seems that just as they arrive, Adam is finally about to succumb to his wounds. Okay, I mean, how long has it been now? Half a day? All right, half a day that he's been walking around with this huge gash in his stomach. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, he's just been doing this for way too long. Okay, but Tila is able to save him as some of the last embers of the sorceress magic flows through her and heals Adam magically. Okay, so basically magic can bring anyone back from the brink of the dead, right? But what kind of magic was it specifically, okay? I mean, yeah, just whatever the script called for, I guess. Now, there's a scene where both Fisto and Clam Champ turn up like an ultimate wrestling tag team, okay? Both of them are written as a bunch of shoot first, ask questions later kind of guys. They greet Tila and Andra with extreme rudeness, okay, mistaking them for palace looters. Uh, but seriously, they didn't recognize Tila from like a mile away. Uh, Fisto even threatens to use his giant fist on Andra. I mean, dude, I thought you were a real ladies man. Come on, what's up? Skelligod later projects himself over Eternos in a cool giant floating head in the skies kind of visual. And then he transforms the citizens into an army of the dead by blanketing the entire city in a purple mist. The mist basically just turns everything it touches into horrifying zombies. Okay, um, yeah, these guys end up looking like something like the Deadites from the Army of Darkness movie, something like that. Fisto even says at one point that it's time for the mist to meet his fist. Now that line was like something totally out of the 80s, okay? <laughs> like from a Stallone movie, okay? I mean, I guess you could say the line was kind of over the top. Uh, but a bit later, both Fisto and Clam Champ are infected by the same turn you into zombies mist and we see them transformed into these horrifying brutes, okay, that just hunger for death and destruction. Now for a minute there, I think that, you know, these are definitely going to be Target or Walmart exclusive action figures, right? You know, sadly, both of them die in battle just seconds later at the hands of the masters, okay? I mean, these are two of Eternia's best combatants, now with hellishly evil enhanced strength and yet, they were taken down easily by both Tila and Andra. I mean, all I can say is, uh, you know, they got written out too fast, okay? Just too fast. 
Then the episode concludes with the stage being set for an epic confrontation between Skelligod and the Masters. Skelligod storms the royal palace with his army of the dead and he confronts a rejuvenated Adam. Now here's the bit that's uh, you know caught me a bit off guard here because uh, you know Adam decides that he can actually, even though he doesn't have the power sword on him anymore, what he can actually do is still call upon the power of Grayskull, all right? Without the sword, just say the words, okay? By the power of Grayskull, you know, just say the words, okay? And the power will still flow through him. I don't think he's ever done something like this before. Nobody has ever seen anything like this before, okay? And uh, Skellico is apparently taken aback by this. Like I said, ain't nobody ever heard of something like this being attempted. But the thing is, um, Adam actually explains his plan to Skelligod, okay, actually explains what he's about to do and he actually has the time to say the words, all right? And what we see is that he's being transformed. The power comes down, rains down upon him and he gets transformed into this savage version of He-Man, okay, the one that we've been seeing in all the promotional materials for season two. But <laughs> the thing I don't get is just that, why didn't Skelligod just freaking, you know, kill him, you know, stab him or something like that, just throw the power sword right at him uh, just before he said it, okay, before he said those words that transformed him. He even had time to actually explain the plot, okay, what he was about to do. And Skellico was just standing there, right? It's like a good minute or so, okay, that he could have done something. Uh, but I guess, you know, okay, that's not how the script <laughs> wanted things to go. Uh, and uh, what we do get is a pretty cool visual of Savage He-Man looking, you know, really hulking like yeah he's massive all right and uh the episode pretty much concludes right there and i think that uh this first episode overall was really fast-paced okay uh he had some twists and turns you know some bits of unexpected moments uh i was pretty much uh very unhappy with the fact that they kind of found a way to just uh have adam sticking around after that horrifying stabbing wound that he suffered at the end of season one uh it, it seemed like he was dead for sure right i mean why would scully god even stab him if he wasn't intending to kill him all right but uh i mean yeah he was just a normal human at that point he didn't have any powers flowing through him or anything like that but he survived that uh through the convenience of the script and was able to actually uh, come back you know later on in the episode as the savage he-man so that's probably like my main gripe there and the way that they conveniently sort of like shoehorned that uh sequence okay but other than that i gotta say the first episode was pretty entertaining okay i want to know what you guys think about it leave me your comments below and let me know if you want me to do a recap of episode two okay i'll be happy to do it just let me know in the comment section as well and thanks guys i'll catch all of you again real soon